This week's word of the week is going to be stringer bead. Now, on a scale of 1 to 10, if you don't know what a stringer bead is, it's like a 10. I mean, it's up there, it's big time. So, yeah, we're going to circle 10 there. It's a 10. It's a very common term used in welding. Um, I, the other day, I had a guy who I was uh, talking to about whether to do a weaver or a stringer, and he said, what's a stringer? And that's why I chose to do stringer bead as the word of the week, because if you don't know, you don't know, right? If you're just starting, you don't know anything about welding, you're not going to know what a stringer is. If you've been welding for a long time and you don't know what a stringer is, that's bad. It's real bad. But it brings me back to my first bullet here. If you don't know, you don't know. So make sure you ask questions when you're learning a new trade. Because if you don't know, you don't know. Without asking, you're never going to know, right? So um, make sure you understand uh, what people are trying to teach you when you're learning a new trade. And if you don't know, don't be afraid to ask, right? Um, this is a very common term. If, if you're fresh, you don't know it, that's fine. You know it now. It's a stringer bead. In layman's definition, so if I had to say uh, what I told that kid, I said, listen, a stringer bead is when you just lay a straight bead down with no manipulation. So in my opinion, a stringer bead has two parts to it. One, it's straight. Two, it doesn't have a weave. So I kind of drew an arrow over here. Uh, that's all it is. A stringer bead is just a straight bead with no manipulation. Um, not a lot of information on that, so I just tried to think of when you would use a stringer versus not use a stringer. That's what I did down here. So uses. So when would you use a stringer bead? Uh, shield metal arc welding or stick welding? You can do stringer beads quite frequently, and that's what you're supposed to be doing because it naturally wets out. All right. Um, when you would not use a stringer bead and stick is some of the stuff over here which I should probably go over here in a second I'm going to go over it anyways if you had a gap or if you're out of position so like you're doing a bird club you might do a you know a weave not a stringer bead but with stick welding for the most part you can get away with running stringers and it wets out fine and it's not all high and ropey. Tape welding the same thing. Um, tape welding if I wanted to get wider I just push the foot pedal down further and allow it to, to wet out. Uh, Again, you can take weld and put a weave in and take welding too. Uh, some people do little circles depending on how you like to do it. It's all up to the, the actual preference of the welder. But for the most part, TIG welding has a lot of stringers in it. Uh, sheet metal, if you're welding eighth of an inch, I mean, you can get away with not running a weave, even if you're using MIG. So sheet metal, commonly you use a stringer bead. Usually you want to get across as quickly as possible. So you're not putting any more heat than you have to to cause the, the, the warping and so. Um, setting up a machine. When people set up a machine, they grab a piece of scrap and they run a stringer bead. Just to see what it looks like, right? So setting up a machine. Spray transfer, you can get away with running stringers with uh, gas metal or welding because it, it naturally wets out because it's hotter. Um, you can see that I'm referencing MIG as, as a lot of times when you need to actually weave it and not run a stringer because it doesn't wet out like stick and tick. Root passes. Most root passes you want to run stringers. When you don't um, run a stringer out of root passes, you're doing something wrong. You're getting a big gap, you know, so you kind of weave it around to just distribute the heat so it doesn't blow through and things like that. But for the most part on, on root passes you want to run stringers. Over here, non-uses. Like I was saying, a lot of that stuff, gas metal or welding or mid welding, you weave it. You very rarely are going to run stringers unless you're doing, like we said earlier, the sheet metal stuff. Uh, if you just take a quarter inch plate and you MIG weld straight across, it's going to be all high and ropey and look like a, like a wormy type thing. It just looks not good. So uh, most of the time with gas metal arc welding, you're going to be running some kind of weed, right? We covered gaps, right? You've got a root, you're getting a big gap, you got to weave it. Even a stick, if you have them... Uh, uh, bought it up and they're real thick, you're still going to have to do some kind of weave. So gaps are a lot of times when you're not going to want to run a stringer. Out of position well, we talk about vertical. Uh, with stick, you're going to go over hold, over hold, over hold. Thick sections. When you're doing thick sections, you're going to want to do a weave that can take the heat. Whereas sheet metal can't take the heat, so you don't want to hang out too long or you're going to blow a hole in it. With thick sections, you don't have to worry about that, so you can put a nice weave in there. Uh, then, of course, with uh, TIG welding, Walk in the cup, right? If you're going to do any kind of walk in the cup or wobbling of the cup, um, you're going to have a weave in there. So I'm trying to think of anything else I can think of as far as uses and non uses, and I can't really think of anything. So that's what I have. So we'll bring
everything's back down here. So if you didn't know what a stringer bead, hopefully that uh, clears up what it is. It's just a straight bead with no uh, weave or manipulation. Uh, so that's all we got for today. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to TV Weld, and we'll see you next time.